Good morning and welcome to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Gradick, your host. Delighted to have you with us on this beautiful Monday morning. And we're getting ready to do it again. We've been doing it for many years and we thank you for listening most of all. And we thank our sponsor, Tanner Health System, uh, for being our sponsor of the Community Voice. And we're honored to have in studio on a return visit, Dwayne Hack, President of West Georgia Rights Lodge. Good morning, Dwayne. Good morning, Steve. Thanks for having us. Well, thank you for coming back. We've been doing this now for a Numerous while. Numerous years. It yes, seems we have. like. It seems we, like. Yeah. yeah. And we're not going to figure out exactly how many because, you know, neither one of us get any younger. We'll show our age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, well, so this gives us an opportunity to um, introduce West Georgia Right to Life to, to those in our audience who may not be familiar. And so with that, I'm going to just throw it to you. Great. Again, we appreciate the opportunity to come and, and speak with you and, and all your uh, listeners this morning. Uh, West Georgia Right to Life, we're a chapter of Georgia Right to Life. Uh, I oversee as president Carol Douglas Hurd, and have kind of snuck into Harrelson County a little bit as well with some contacts there. Uh, and we are the, the pro-life movement for West Georgia. Um, I've been in this president's position now for uh, some 13 years. Okay. I uh, started off in the life movement in Montgomery, Alabama back in the mid-'80s. And when we moved to Carrollton, just kind of continued on. So um, the Lord's blessed our our chapter. Uh, we continue to be able to get into different churches locally and bring the pro-life message either during a Sunday school hour or a Sunday night or on a Wednesday night. Uh, just basically give a presentation about the life movements. Give a lot of information that people, you know, unfortunately are ignorant because you're not going to see some of the stuff on Fox or CNN or ABC, NBC. So it kind of gives them a, a peripheral view from uh, 30,000 feet. And most of all, people don't have time to keep up. No, you're right. You're right. There's just so much information now. I mean, technologically, there's so much information out there. It's just hard to keep up with all the different areas and contacts. But that's what we try to do. When we make a presentation to folks, it's very simple. It's a and a It's an open discussion. And it just allows them to understand what's going on on our local level, which is Carroll, um, Douglas and Hurd, and then on a state level. But then it also brings it up from a national level as well. So you're, you're primarily an educational Outreach. Yes, sir. Yeah, educational, but then also working legislative side, working closely with our local uh, uh, folks uh, here in, this, in Atlanta, but then also in the uh, in national uh, as well in Washington. Well, I think uh, the election of a new president last November got pretty much everybody's attention, and he has made a couple of appointments. I wanted to get your reaction to it. Neil Gorsuch uh, to the Supreme Court and Dr. Tom Price to Health and Human Services and your reaction to both from a pro-life perspective. Well, we're, we're cautiously optimistic on both of them. Um, uh, President Trump has fulfilled and, and, you know, during his campaign, he said he was going to be putting life individuals um, into these key uh, areas of, of responsibilities. Judge Korsuch, um, you know, from what we've seen, is a pro-life individual. Um, in 2006, he wrote a book. It was called The Future of Assisted Suicide and Euthanasia. And one of the comments that he put in there that he was extremely strong in the life situations. And he has also ruled in favor of religious liberty um, in the Hobby Lobby case. So we're, we're, again, we're being very cautious. He hasn't gotten the endorsement yet from Georgia Right to Life and some other life groups. But from everything we've been able to read, there was one comment that I had on here as well that he uh, – that he was very pro-life. He said, human life is fundamental and inherently invalu is valuable, and that the uh, intentional taking of human life by private persons is always wrong. And so that gives us a ray of hope that it could be a Scalia-type individual who would marry some of those uh, basic beliefs that uh, a judge, Supreme Court Justice uh, Scalia had as well. So we're excited about it. Tom Price, he's he's received 100% pro-life ratings from National Right to Life as well as the Tony Perkins Family Council. So that's positive as well. And, you know, in one of his comments he made talking about uh, preparing legislation to stop taxpayer pu uh, funding of abortions, you know, and I'm going to quote this because I don't want to misquote it, but he said that this piece of legislation prohibits taxpayer funding of elective abortions, no matter where they occur in the federal system. And he, and he also said, which really caught my attention as I watched it on YouTube, he said, we have a responsibility through our government to protect the most vulnerable among us, not the least of whom are the unborn. And so, you know, with these two appointments that President Trump has made, it has really energized uh, the pro-life movement 
uh, going forward. So. I guess that's somewhat surprising because Trump did not have a longstanding pro-life record. No, s- sir. To say the least. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, he, you know, he was he was funding in his earlier days some of the pro-choice candidates in the past. But, you know, I think he might have had a uh, Damascus Road experience, mm-hmm. you know, that possibly had his eyes open, which, you know, a lot of folks do as they get older in life and they see the value of life and I think something about having kids and grandkids probably does that as well, and, and it really shifted his thinking. I wanted to ask you, because the number seems to vary from almost um, whoever throws it out, but what is the most accurate number that you can come up with of the number of abortions that have occurred in America since Roe v. Wade? And you're right, it does. Um, you know, you have some people say that it's, uh, you know, it's 58 million. Is it uh, 61 million? I mean, what is the exact number? And it is hard to say. And, and that's simply because you've got two different reportings. Uh, you've got the, the Guttmacher, which is a one institute. It's a marketing study that's really, it's kind of an offshoot of Planned Parenthood. But they have their study. But then you also have the CDC that has their study. And what the CDC's numbers are voluntarily. So basically they go into the different states and ask their health and human resource people, um, uh, can you give us the numbers of the reported uh, abortions that occurred in your state? And there's three states that don't report, and that's uh, California, Maryland, and New Hampshire. They don't report to the CDC. Uh, their numbers on a regular basis. And then you have states like Iowa, Louisiana, and Missis- and Massachusetts that report only out-of-state individuals that come into their state for abortions. So you do have some mixed numbers. I mean, a good number, I guess that's not a good word, a number that you could use would be somewhere around 58 million to 59 million abortions since 1970. But if you've got three states not reporting, then that's a, a very conservative number. Absolutely. Particularly yeah. in one's California. That's right. Yeah, California would, would really escalate the numbers extremely well. Does California report to, what was it, the Guttmacher Institute? I don't know if they do or not. Right. I just know from, from every, all my findings and studies over the years, I know that those three don't report on a regular basis to CDC. So, you know, Guttmacher says somewhere around 59 million. Um, it, it, part of my function, you know, is going in and talking to churches, um, specifically sitting down and have these educational meetings. And I always, you know, 58 million, well, what is that number? 59 million. And I always kind of give an illustration, which kind of brings in perspective. In your mind, if you could almost take and, and look at a map of the United States and go over to Louisiana, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Alabama, um, Georgia, you go up to Tennessee, you go down to South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, you know, that whole area of our country, and, and basically just wipe them out. Mm-hmm. And, and that's 58 million. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think when you look at it from that way, it puts us in such a different perspective of how many people mm-hmm. have been aborted since 73. Mm-hmm. And with a birth rate in America of 1.8, you take those 58 million, they would have had kids. Absolutely. So, you know, we're talking, or at least some of them would have. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you don't want to put a number to it because, I mean, what number can you put on a life? I right. mean, you just can't do that. But, you know, if, if that 58 million would have been part of our society, you know, how much money could they have put into the Social Security system? And, and how much could they have contributed, not just financially, but just um, a, to, as a person? Right. The or next, to our overall society in terms of creativity and energy and wealth and uh, all of those things. Yeah, I mean, it could have been the next owner of Gratic Communication, or it yeah, could have been... Yeah, no, the... we, we need to get on that one, I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, just all the different lineage that could have occurred. It could have been the next, you know, developer of a cure for cancer. I mean, all that, that goes with it. It's... Our guest this morning is Dwayne Hag, president of West Georgia Right to Life, and we're going to take a break and hear from our fine sponsor at Tanner Health System. After this word, we'll be right back. Looking for an easy way to get your healthy on? Tanner Health System encourages you to put your healthy where your mouth is. Tanner and Get Healthy Live Well wants you to know that eating five or more servings of fruits and vegetables each day has real health benefits. It can help to prevent heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and some cancers. In fact, eating more fruit and vegetables may be the most important dietary change you can make to improve your own and your family's health. Going for five is easy. Just add an extra serving to meals and snacks you already eat. Whether it's canned, frozen, or fresh, all are nutritious. Working your way to five a day is a tasty way to get your healthy on. Find ways to up your intake of fruits and vegetables online at www.gethealthylivewell.org. 
Tanner's go-to online destination for health tips, fitness tracking, healthy recipes, and more. Go for five and get your healthy on. Good morning. Welcome back to the Community Voice. I'm Steve Gratik, your host. Delighted to have you back with us this morning. We're honored to have in studio Dwayne Hack, president of West Georgia Right to Life. We mentioned uh, the Roe v. Wade earlier and talking about how people really don't, are not able, we don't have time really to keep up with all of this. There's actually two Supreme Court decisions that l- led to abortion on demand in America, right? That's correct. Yeah, Roe v. Wade is the one that gets a lot of publicity um, out through media, but on that same day, there was another ruling, and it was Doe versus Bolton, and it really has some Georgia roots to it. Uh, Doe was the was a female that brought a case against the state of Georgia, Attorney General Bolton. It was Georgia case 410 U.S. District 179, and what it did was it said that it overturned the strict Georgia laws that we had, because in Georgia, back in the 70s, Steve, they were the most conservative state in the union as far as abortions go. Really? If you were to have an abortion, you had to have three physicians and a three-member panel that approved that abortion at that point, and uh, they would not allow any out-of-state abortions to come in to Georgia to have a, an abortion. So it was, it was the most conservative. And so what the Supreme Court ruled on that date was, and they went back to a 72 vote, just like it was in Roe v. Wade, that said, yes, you can have an abortion under the privacy clause of our Constitution, but yet it said that you can have the abortion all nine months. Um, this past weekend, I was at a local church uh, during their missions conference, sharing the right to life movement information with them and a couple of individuals came up to me and said well you can only have an abortion up to six months right and i said no i mean and again that's not stuff you hear on fox and abc but all nine months up to that last minute of that last day you can have an abortion based upon the doe versus bolton law in 1973 and it's under the privacy cause. You know, Blackman was the one that, you know, was one of the ones of the seven to two. And he said, you know, in his closing comments, even though he said that he approved of it, he also said that if the suggestion of personhood of the preborn is established, the abortions rights case, which is Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton, of course, of course, collapses for the right of the fetus is guaranteed specifically by the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. And so you see the reasons why we've really pushed personhood extremely strong in, in a lot of our talking points. Where's Georgia now? You say it was the most conservative in the 70s. How about now? Um, I, in the, lat, in the late, latest individual polling of different pro-life uh, states in the union, you know, we're somewhere in that 10 to 12. Um, even though we continue to eat the elephant one bite at the time, uh, we've worked extremely hard on some current legislation. But uh, we, we have fallen some. Um, as far as being the most conservative concerning abortions. Because I think Texas and Ohio and others are kind of taking a lead now. They are. Michigan is an extremely strong pro-life state. Louisiana is an extremely strong pro-life state. Uh, Texas, like you said, is an extremely strong pro-life state. So we continue to uh, to push the ball forward in Georgia, trying to get legislators uh, to, to go with, uh, in our direction. Let, let me ask you this, because you mentioned the term personhood. So let me let me jump uh, to, to something I want to kind of go with, go through uh, it with you. Uh, you know, pro choices say pro choicers say that that life in the womb is is not a separate individual human life, but tissue, part of the woman's body, and therefore it's up to the woman to do as she wished. So why do you disagree with that? I do disagree with it, and, and all of us that are strong pro-lifers disagree with that as well, because at that point of conception, there's a whole new person that's established. I mean, there's 46 chromosomes that are established at the point of fertilization. And so does a woman have a choice? Absolutely. I agree with that. I, I am not against that at all. Um, but at that point that you made the choice to become pregnant, then all of a sudden your choice now has moved from your individual choice to that individual choice that's now in the womb, and that's a human being. So, um, yes, that we do get, we get combative sometimes when they talk about, you know, the pro-choice individuals, but you know, you, we all have to make decisions in our lives, whatever those decisions are. And who, who's going to make a voice, uh, who's going to make a decision for that, the voiceless, uh, that one in the womb? So, so if, if you're correct, and it's a different, separate, unique human being in the womb, uh, you know, a 
six foot someday six foot basketball player mm -hmm. uh in a, in in the womb and, and with a, a lady that's you know five feet one inch or something mm -hmm. how do you how why are we not recognizing that do you think um that that's that's probably a discussion that we could probably have a, a one hour session and why we're not recognizing it I, I think you know a lot of it boils down to just convenience steve um, unfortunately, our society, you know, we've gotten over the years of being it's all about me society. And I think it's important that we realize it's not just about you uh, as well. It's it's also about the one that has has no voice, um, that individual, that baby in the womb that, you know, who who's protecting that baby? If we're mm -hmm. not doing it, who is? You know, if you go back to the Holocaust days, you know, if and I think it was Niedenmeyer that said, you know, if not me, who? Who is mm -hmm. going to protect that one right there? So they have no voice. Mm -hmm. They have no um, opportunities to make make a mo uh, moving forward for themselves. So we have got to stand for that. So just like the time of the Holocaust or times of slavery, we're not fully recognizing that, which is a fully a person. Mm -mm. And, and I think we've gotten um, lackadaisical possibly, and, and I say this cautiously, that you know, within our local churches and in our in our church environment, we've got lackadaisical thinking that the term abortion is a bad word, um, and it's not a it's not a bad word in the sense that we've got to get the message out. We need help from the pulpits to get mm -hmm. the message out and to talk to people about it. You know, in an average church today in America, one out of four people, one out of four females that are in that church. Um, Church of that congregation have had an abortion. Mm -hmm. Twenty five percent of America know well, at that. Point. Well, speak to uh, well, you mentioned the word, like I said, personhood, but there's also this element where it seems like, particularly Planned Parenthood, that there's been a higher percentage of uh, abortions of African American children uh, than there have proportion to the uh, population at large. That that's true, and and again, you know, Planned Parenthood is is a provider of a majority of the abortions in America it's 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 alarming in that respect how much you know money that they're getting just from our federal government um this year uh, president trump uh he he vetoed the Mex or he didn't veto he endorsed the mexico policy and that started back in the reagan days back in the uh early 80s uh when ronald reagan um he was uh he called it the mexico policy and what that was it was uh money was being funded all across the world to uh, Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. to be funding abortions and health care services. And he said, no more. We're not going to do that. So he, he did, called it the Mexico policy where funds were going to be supported. And Donald Trump this year um, went back to that policy and reinstated it, saying we're not giving $550 million to these overseas Planned Parenthood organizations. Um, and that flipped back and forth between Bush and Clinton and uh, Obama. That's right. And that's correct. Trump flipped it back. Yeah, Obama vetoed it last uh, right. his last eight years, and then Trump went in and said we're no longer doing that. So, you know, Planned Parenthood is the leading provider of abortions in America. I mean, they're uh, by far the number one provider for it, and we're giving you know somewhere in the neighborhood of five hundred million dollars a year of our taxpayer money. You know, every I think time, their budget's a billion dollars, right? It is. It is. It's 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 a, over a billion dollars. They get um, they in twenty fourteen the latest numbers that came out that I was able to pull up um, was twenty fourteen twenty fifteen financials, and they did about three hundred and twenty four thousand abortions, which represents about thirty percent, thirty two percent of the national abortions. And that's in one basis. year. In just one year. Right. Yeah, just right. one year they did it, and it's kind of ironic when you look through the numbers and kind of really drill down, peel back the onion a little bit, you can see that. For the fiscal year 2014 2015, uh, they saw 200,000 less patients during that financial planning time, but yet they were uh, they provided 11% fewer services, and their subsidies went up $25 million from the federal government. So they're mm -hmm. doing less services, seeing more people, but yet they were given $25 million more um, for their services. And, and, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, nut and shell game that goes on. There's this word called fungibility, mm -hmm. and what fungibility means is you know how the funds are moved within a certain corporation. Even uh, uh, Webster says that you know it's moving monies from one pot to another pot. Mm -hmm. And it'd be like, for instance, if my child calls me and says, "Hey, Dad, I'm really between a rock and a hard spot, and uh, hours are cut back, money's down. Can you give me a loan?" Mm -hmm. And so I said, "What do you need, son?" He says, five hundred dollars." Mm -hmm. So I said, so how does your weekly finances work? He said, well, every week I'm about $200, you know, basically to the good. Mm -hmm. 
he says, well, can you give me a loan of $500? And I give him this loan in my mind, knowing that he's talked about buying this new HG TV for 500 bucks. And so he moves the money. I give him the money. He puts it in his checking account or he puts it in his savings account. And all of a sudden he moves that $300 of the 500 I gave him into his checking account, goes out and buys that TV. <laughs> he hasn't necessarily touched my money, yeah. but what he's done is he's gone ahead and I've allowed him to do that. And that's kind of what happens with Planned Parenthood. Well, I think precisely what it does, what I understand, it goes through Medicare, Medicaid rather, it's it goes correct. through the Title 10 Family Planning Program, mm -hmm. it goes through Title 20 Social Services Block Grants, and then from a Title 5 Maternal and Child Health Services Block Grant. So it all becomes indirect, just as you described with your, you know, son. It's a, it's a, it's a nut and it's a nut and shell game. You know, it's an accounting game that they just move the funds, and that's what fungibility so when you, of funds when, is. When you ask a state representative or uh, legislator if the state is funding uh, Planned Parenthood, they go, "Well, we don't know." That's right, because they, they don't know. Right. You give all, them a check, and they decide yeah. where that check moves yeah. about. So. Okay, well, we're going to uh, take a break, and we're going to be back with more, and we'll wrap it up with Dwayne Hack after this word from Tanner Health System. Need help finding something healthy to eat? Tanner Health System has an app for that. Menuit helps you find healthy food options on the go. The smartphone app is powered by Tanner's Health Experts, who teamed up with restaurants across West Georgia to make it easier for you to choose healthy food and eat better. Menuit acts like your personal nutrition assistant, showing you the healthiest items on the menu. So when you're not sure what's good to eat, Menuit. You can even use the app to look up recipes and plan healthy meals at home, and modify your options based on nutritional preferences, such as a low sodium or vegetarian diet. Menuit and Tanner Health System, making it easier to eat healthy and live well. A healthier lifestyle is only a fingertip away. Menuit is free to download on your Apple or Android smartphone. You can download it today by searching Menuit in the App Store or on Google Play. Learn more about Menuit at GetHealthyLiveWell.org. Good morning. Welcome back to this Community Voice. I'm Steve Gretick, your host. Delighted to have you with us. We're honored to have in studio Dwayne Hag, president of West Georgia Right to Life. In our previous segment, we talked a little bit about how it seems like there's an, um, I know some of the terms have been kind of strong in this, uh, in this realm, kind of a black genocide in that African-American babies are aborted at a higher rate per uh, rate of population. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, sure, sure can. Um, and some of the latest statistics, and these are pretty current too. This is really going into the end of 2015 as far as the abortions in the black community goes. And it's unfortunate that black children are three times more likely to be killed in a womb than a white child. I mean, it's just amazing the numbers. And 80% of the Planned Parenthood facilities in the United States are placed into minority areas may they be black may they be hispanic um but those are the locations that basically in inner cities depressed areas that planned parenthood targets those so individuals location and marketing absolutely i mean of course they're gonna they're gonna feed off of those that um are are in that lower bracket or those individuals that just are having a struggle um 13 percent of american women in the u.s today are african-american but yet 35 percent of the abortions are in that black population mm -hmm. and you could peel it back and even look at the state of georgia uh, 60 percent of the abortions um back in 2015 which were 16,370 mm -hmm. um the uh, the black population only represented 38 percent of our mm -hmm. georgia population but yet 60 percent of that of those aborted mm -hmm. were in that um, were in that black community one thing that got a lot of publicity was in New York, where it was like 30%. Yeah. And the population, of course, is down around 10 or whatever. Yeah. The last number I had, Steve, and again, I wasn't able to drill into New York, but in, in New York in the 2012 analysis, yeah. there were 31,328 uh, black abortions, but there were only 24,754 births. Yeah, yeah. So it's just totally upside down. And, and you go back to the roots. Remember... Planned Parenthood was founded by Margaret Sanger. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of Margaret Sanger's, you know, in 1921, she wrote that birth control review magazine. And it said the most urgent problem we have today is how to limit and discourage the other fertility of the mentally and the physical defective of our society. The undeniable feeble-minded should indeed not be dis 
be only discouraged but prevented from propagating their kind. Human weeds, reckless breeders, spawning human beings who never should have been born, uh, immigrants, African Americans, the poor, etc. And those are her words of the founder of Planned Parenthood. In the Declaration, uh, it says we're um, created, uh, how's that go? Uh, we're, we're endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights. rights, among them life. So basically, this is a sanctity of life versus a quality of life issue. Correct, correct. How, how do you define that? Well, it is, is, you know, all of, when you look back through the Declaration, everything revolves around life itself. I mean, you have to have life to be able to have life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And, you know, you can even go back to our biblical foundations and our biblical um, roots of, our, of, of America itself. I mean, you go back to Jeremiah 1 and 5, as I knew you before you were in the womb. You look at Ephesians 2.10, and it talks about that we are his workmanship created unto good work. So it all does revolve around life. And, and that's where we're working really hard, Steve, in personhood to be able to create personhood as our marching orders mm -hmm. because we feel like if we can ever get to that point of calling that baby in the womb a person, then all of a sudden it goes back to the 14th Amendment of our Constitution, mm -hmm. which I see you have there, and mm -hmm. it talks about uh, just due cause. And an individual does have just due cause and goes with the laws, and it creates, and it talks about it being a person. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand that uh, Washington, D.C., because this has been mainly in Oregon and the state of Washington, is now looking at an assisted suicide uh, proposal. Uh, tell us where we are on that. I think there's four states now that have it approved. I know D.C., um, Montana was one as well. Um, there's two other states that have assisted su uh, suicide. And, and, you know, again, you got to get back to that common denominator. Even in D.C., I know there's been talk about it. Well, you got to get to that common denominator of who are we to call ourselves God to take a life away? Mm -hmm. I mean, who gave us the power to be able to make a determination on that individual that says to end their life? And so it's, it's a... Um, constant battle in the pro-life community to be able to 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 go back to that common denominator you know uh, it talks about imago day you know, we are created in the image of god so who gives steve Gradick, Dwayne hack the right to be able to make that decision that say you know what i'm i'm gonna go ahead and take my life and do that so mm -hmm. it, it, it's a it's a constant battle in the life community but it's one that we have to stand strong upon is it what um you mentioned, and we're going to run out of time, but you mentioned, I think it was 16,000 abortions in, in Georgia uh, last year, correct? Well, in, in the state of Georgia, um, in the state of Georgia, abortions is somewhere around 30,000. Okay, 30,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But now, one big impact we've seen uh, on the number of abortions has been the uh, tool of ultrasound. Uh, it really does bring a lot of this thing front and center visible, correct? Absolutely, and, and I'm so thankful and, and thank the Lord for people like the PRC who are mm -hmm. able to bring people in and show them, you know, in all the facts that we've been able to establish in the life community, 78% of those people that come in to have an ultrasound decide that they don't want to have an abortion at mm -hmm. that point because it's something that they're seeing visually. I mean, as a as a parent and also as a grandparent, the technology from 73 to now is so much more diverse. You can see the, you can hear the heartbeat at four and five weeks. You can see the, the development at eight weeks and 12 weeks and the ultrasound and the three-dimensional. So ultrasounds have done, and, and even there was a statement made by Rick Perry on the, when he was doing on the campaign trail talking about he wanted to have an ultrasound bill. And Cecil Richards came out, and she's the president of, of Planned Parenthood, said, you know, why would, why would Rick Perry say that this just danger, this is a dangerous agenda on it for every woman? The U.S. woman will suffer consequences for years. And the, the state of Louisiana tried to have a sonogram bill as well, and somebody called it a tool of torture for a woman. And so they know that people walk in and see that. They just don't want anything to do with it. All right. Uh, tell us if people want more information or how to get in touch with West Georgia Right to Life. How should they go about it? Absolutely. And again, we appreciate the time this morning just to spend with you and, and educate your listeners. Um, West Georgia Right to Life, my cell, 770-312-4160. You can also go to, we've got a webpage. It's www.wg 
rtl.org. Let me tell folks as well, we're having April the 17th here in Carrollton. It's a free luncheon. We've got the president of Georgia Right to Life that's going to come in, and we're going to be at American Pie Restaurant on Monday, April the 17th from 1145 to 115. Free lunch, show up. You just got to RSVP, so let us know. Dwayne Hack, our guest this morning. Thank you for listening. Go out and make it a great day. WLBB, Carrollton. California State Highway Patrol Deputy Commissioner Warren Stanley says his agency is among those adding personnel and other resources to help out in Oroville. Additionally to the personnel, we brought in some other assets. We brought in uh, three helicopters that can assist with